Niger has taken a stance to hold accountable all those involved in the military threat following the coup, ensuring the sovereignty and stability of its nation. It is of concern, however, that Nigeria, led by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and ECOWAS, have been influenced by external forces seeking to reverse the coup in Niger. ECOWAS, with Nigeria's president at its helm, had previously issued an ultimatum to Niger, warning of military intervention if the coup was not reversed. It is disheartening to witness one African nation issuing threats against another. In response, Niger has decided to take action not only against Nigeria, but also the nations of Europe. As a demonstration of its resolve, Niger has recently announced a complete ban on the export of liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, commonly known as cooking gas, to all countries, including Nigeria. Nevertheless, Niger has made it clear that if Nigeria, ECOWAS, and Europe do not respect its sovereignty, it will take further measures highlighting the significance of the Trans-Saharan gas pipeline for Europe. It is important to delve deeper into this matter in the accompanying video. On Tuesday, the government of Niger officially declared the immediate suspension of all LPG exports, prioritizing domestic production to meet the country's own needs. Reuters reported that the authorities stressed the importance of self-sufficiency and indicated that businesses could apply for authorization to resume exports if there is a surplus. It is worth noting that Niger primarily exports gas to its neighboring country, Nigeria. In 2020, both nations signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Petroleum Product Importation with representatives from Nigeria and Niger, formally endorsing the agreement. Silva expressed his optimism, stating that this development is a significant stride forward. The Niger Republic possesses surplus products that need to be exported and Nigeria offers a market for these goods. This relationship holds the potential for mutual benefits. However, as Nigeria's stance towards Niger has become adversarial, the supply of LPG cannot continue smoothly due to escalating tensions. This predicament undoubtedly puts Nigeria in a challenging position, as it heavily relies on LPG. It is important to note that liquefied petroleum gas is vital for cooking, heating, and vehicles. Its price in Nigeria has experienced a considerable surge, reaching an unprecedented level of 1,000 Nigerian Naira per kilogram, compared to its previous price of 750 Naira. The Nigerian Association of Liquefied Petroleum Gas Marketers had already cautioned about potential price increases resulting from fluctuations in foreign exchange rates and international market activities. Now Niger intends to utilize its surplus LPG for various domestic purposes, a move that has been welcomed by the people of Niger. In response to the removal of fuel subsidies and to address transportation challenges for residents, Governor Mohamed Bago of Niger State has procured 200 buses powered by compressed natural gas. He announced this initiative during a dinner for members of the House of Representatives Press Corps in Minna, the capital of the state. Additionally, the state government intends to establish a memorandum of understanding with a rice processing plant in Kano, aiming to directly purchase paddy rice produced in Niger State. The governor emphasized that part of the state's infrastructure development plan includes awarding contracts for the construction of a 506-kilometer road network spanning the state. However, there is a specific focus on preventing Nigeria from accessing Niger's LPG. The reason behind this lies in the Nigerian president's involvement in encouraging ECO was to intervene in Niger's internal affairs and employ military intervention. He has requested permission from Nigeria's parliament to invade Niger. Niger's perspective towards the Nigerian president is understandable, and their decision to halt LPG exports to Nigeria is just the beginning. The declaration by the regional bloc of West Africa, influenced by the Nigerian president, that military intervention in coup-stricken Niger is a last resort has further strained the situation. Concurrently, Nigeria has cut off electricity supplies to increase pressure on the leaders of the coup. In Abuja, the Nigerian capital, West African military chiefs gathered to strategize a response, while a delegation arrived in Nigeria for negotiations. These events unfolded one week after the coup, which shook the fragile nation. 
the leaders of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, imposed trade and financial sanctions, issuing a one-week ultimatum to the coup leaders to reinstate Niger's democratically elected president or face the potential use of force. The Eco White, WAS Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, reaffirmed that military intervention is the absolute last option on the table, but ECOWAS must be prepared for such an eventuality. A delegation from ECOWAS, led by former Nigerian leader Abdel Salami Abubakar, engaged in talks in Niger. As the current chair of ECOWAS, Nigeria represents the military and economic powerhouse of West Africa and has pledged to take a firm stance against the increasing occurrence of coups in the region since 2020. Nigeria's power company, Nijalak, confirmed the suspension of electricity supply to Niger as a consequence of the imposed sanctions. Niger, being one of the world's poorest nations, relies on Nigeria for 70% of its power. Mali and Burkina Faso, both under junta rule, have issued warnings that any military intervention in their neighboring country would be considered a declaration of war against them. Moscow has called for urgent national dialogue in Niger and cautioned that threats of intervention will neither help alleviate tensions nor calm the domestic situation. The World Bank's announcement of suspending aid to Niger, with the exception of private sector partnerships, added another layer to the ongoing situation. Russia warned that any military intervention in Niger would lead to a prolonged confrontation and destabilize the Sahel region. The United States, which supported the reinstatement of the deposed leader Mohamed Bazoum, claimed that the Wagner mercenary group was taking advantage of the instability. Supporters of the coup, some waving Russian flags, staged protests near a French military base close to the capital city of Niamey, chanting slogans against France and ECOWAS. The bloc reiterated its openness to finding a diplomatic solution to the crisis, but Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, stated that all options, including the use of force as a last resort, were on the table. While the United States did not explicitly endorse military action, it called on the junta to step aside and allow the restoration of Niger's democratic constitution. However, teaching Nigeria a lesson was not the sole objective. As France and Europe seemed to support eco pause military intervention in Niger, it was decided that Europe should also be taught a lesson. Niger issued a clear warning that any European intervention in its internal matters would result in the termination of the Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline. The Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline, also known as the NIGL Pipeline and Trans-African Gas Pipeline, was conceived in the 1970s as a means to enhance the European Union's gas supplies. The primary objective of the pipeline was to diversify Europe's energy suppliers and reduce dependence on Russia for natural gas. In January 2002, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and Algeria's national oil and gas company, Sona Track, laid the foundation for the project by signing a memorandum of understanding. Feasibility studies were conducted, and in 2009, an intergovernmental agreement was signed by the energy ministers of Nigeria, Niger, and Algeria. Niger's geographic location between Nigeria and Algeria played a crucial role in the pipeline project. The pipeline's route starts in Nigeria's Wari region, extends through Niger, and reaches Hasi Aramel in Algeria. From there, it connects to existing pipelines, such as the Trans-Mediterranean, Maghreb Europe, Medgas, and Galsai, ultimately supplying gas to Europe from Algeria's Mediterranean coast. The successful implementation of the pipeline project relies on the participation of Niger. If Niger declines to join, the entire project would collapse. The Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline, TSGPP, is a significant infrastructure project spanning approximately 4,128 kilometers. It is expected to have a diameter ranging from 48 to 56 inches and an annual capacity of up to 30 billion cubic meters of natural gas. The pipeline's route covers 1,037 kilometers in Nigeria, 841 kilometers in Niger, and 2,310 kilometers in Algeria. Originally scheduled to be operational by 2015, the TSGP was estimated to require an investment of around US $10 billion for the pipeline itself 
and an additional $3 billion for gas gathering centers. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Algeria's Sonatrach, and the Republic of Niger were envisioned as partners in the construction and operation of the pipeline. Initially, NNPC and Sonatrach were set to jointly hold 90% of the shares, with Niger retaining the remaining 10%. Several international entities, including Gazprom, Russia, Gale, India, Total SA, France, ENI, Italy, and Royal Dutch Shell, have expressed interest in participating in the project. Potential partners for the TSGP are expected to offer more than just financial support. As emphasized by the Algerian and Nigerian energy ministers, the project presents opportunities for various specialized suppliers, including American companies in areas such as management services, pipeline construction equipment, flow control technologies, pipeline integrity testing, corrosion solutions, and flow measurement technology. However, the future of the Trans-Saharan gas pipeline has become uncertain due to the military coup in Nigeria and the opposition from Europe. The coup prompted the regional bloc eco was to consider troop deployment, and Europe's stance against Niger has posed significant challenges to the project. Algeria's strong interest in mediating the Niger crisis is believed to be linked to the TSGP. In the event of an eco was invasion, Mali and Burkina Faso, also led by military governments, have expressed their willingness to support Niger. This complex situation highlights the importance of understanding that the pipeline's future depends on Niger's cooperation. Rather than engaging in offensive actions that could sabotage the pipeline, stakeholders such as Europe, Nigeria, Algeria, and ECOWAS should approach the situation peacefully. Pushing Niger into a corner could lead to the country activating its security pact with Mali and Burkina Faso, potentially resulting in the collapse of the Trans-Saharan gas pipeline. The pipeline is crucial not only as a need but as a necessity for Europe. With Europe actively seeking reliable alternative energy sources, particularly natural gas, in light of strained energy relations with Russia, the TSGP holds the promise of addressing energy poverty and ensuring energy reliability for the continent. The completion of the Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline, TSGP, would potentially allow for the transportation of up to 30 billion cubic meters of gas annually from Nigeria, through Niger, and on to Algeria. The plan is to either pump the gas through the undersea Trans-Mediterranean Pipeline to Europe or load it onto liquefied natural gas tankers for export. However, many energy experts doubt that African gas will flow into Europe in the near future, and some believe that the pipeline may not be constructed within the next 10 years. A lack of political will is seen as a primary challenge for the project, according to Isaac Boddy, a Nigerian public finance specialist. The lack of political will refers to the fact that Europe and the countries involved in the pipeline cannot expect Niger to comply with the agreement if it is treated as an enemy. It seems that the Nigerian president, who should have prioritized the pipeline and its benefits for all sides, instead chose to go against Niger and even sought parliamentary approval for an invasion. Algeria, on the other hand, has acted more rationally, understanding the potential benefits of the TSGP and prioritizing long-term goals. Meanwhile, the Nigerian president's actions have compromised the selling of Nigeria's vast energy reserves including the significant natural gas deposits in the Niger Delta, which is renowned for its oil reserves. The European Union stands as the world's largest importer of natural gas, and in 2021, a significant share of Europe's energy came from burning natural gas. Europe's dependence on gas extends across various sectors, and the supply constraints imposed by Russia have further highlighted the importance of finding alternative energy sources. Russia's conflict in Ukraine and the resulting surge in energy prices have led several European Union countries to unveil emergency measures and financial commitments to cope with escalating energy costs. The Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline could provide a comprehensive solution to Europe's energy challenges, but interference from France and the involvement in the Niger coup have complicated matters. Niger has warned about ending the gas pipelines indicating that there is still time for Europe and France to distance themselves from the Niger coup matter and potentially salvage the prospects of the TSGP. 
Niger's decision to ban the export of LPG to Nigeria does demonstrate that they are serious about taking actions that align with their interests. It indicates that Niger is willing to make significant moves to protect its own revenues. Whether Niger should allow the Trans-Saharan gas pipeline to pass through its territory is ultimately a decision for the government of Niger to make, considering its own strategic, economic, and political interests. The pipeline has the potential to bring economic benefits to Niger, including revenue from transit fees and the strengthening of its energy sector. Using the pipeline as leverage to influence Europe's involvement in Africa's internal matters is a strategic consideration. However, it is important to approach such matters with caution as leveraging the pipeline in this way could have diplomatic and geopolitical consequences. It's essential to consider the long-term implications and potential impacts on relationships with both Europe and other African countries. Ultimately, the decision of whether to allow the pipeline or not should be based on a thorough assessment of the benefits, risks, and alignment with Niger's overall national interests. It is crucial for Niger to make informed decisions that prioritize the well-being of its citizens and economic development while considering the potential consequences of its actions.